What the fuck are you doing in my car? <laughs> I don't recognize you. I'm George's son. You're uh, George's son. <laughs> <laughs> It's the third day, we are back in the studio, back in the car. We didn't get much sleep, and that's basically it. Today we have the majority of the day to film one big scene. You may ask, how did you film three scenes in a car the other day, and today you will only film one? Well, let me tell you. This scene is actually taking place around the car. And every single shot is shot from a different angle, which means we need to rotate the car a lot of times and do a lot of different setups. So far we were only shooting them in the car, which means that they have always something between them and the projection. For example, the side windows or you know the, the windshield or whatever, right? Which makes the uh, projection much more realistic. But now Matt has to exit the car, which means he will be directly in front of the projection and I hope it's going to look good. I'm, I'm shitting bricks at this point. <laughs> In this scene, they accidentally hit a dog. The camera needed to tilt up following him as he gets out. If the projection didn't work, we would have to go to plan B. It, no, I'm kidding, we, we didn't have a plan B. It just had to work. I just want to point out again that this is not a super strong projector or you know these LED panels that they use for Star Wars. This is a shitty HD projector that most people have at home and this is really as DIY as you can get. But thankfully it worked and we could move to the next setup. In this shot Jack wipes the blood from his front bumper. So the guys from the art department had to dress up the car a little bit. And one of the girls gave us a little bit of her hair to put on the car as well. So. Again, we filmed this with two cameras to save time. Got polished a week ago, 100 bucks. Camera A filmed the insert of the hand, and camera B filmed Venker's close up towards the projected sky. Yeah, there you go. Not bad. While the guys turned the car around for yet another setup, we quickly ran to the green screen to film the same scene with Matt and Ellen, but on the green screen. You go around the whole polishing thing. My God, did you kill somebody? <laughs> this will be an ultra wide shot of their car in the middle of the road and it will be done in miniature. So the guys acted out the whole scene and then we will be able to choose the parts that we want and I will just composite them into the miniature shot. <sighs> Then we wanted a shot from inside the car, through the windshield. And this actually turned out to be one of Dino's and mine favorite shots in the whole film. Action! If you won't take him, at least put him out of his misery. I got a meeting. It just somehow looks good. Matt is nicely framed in the right half of the shot, the sky behind him totally works. It's just, it, it just works. I need a reaction. Okay. <laughs> no, I like it. I <laughs> don't mind it's on that. Yeah, yeah, it's like, fuck. And by now you probably figured why, why this scene takes so long, because this is not a normal dialogue scene, this is more like a director scene. Because characters are moving a lot throughout the scene, and almost each line of dialogue is filmed in a different angle, with a different setup. So you know, a scene like this takes a lot of time. This is Tadia, he's our AD, which means he's in charge of the whole set. Uh, are you sleeping well these days? Uh, no, but uh, I'm used to it. It's <laughs> six hours of sleep is enough. Oh, six is a luxury. Before each take, Tadia is also calling the cues for camera and sound. Camera. He smacks the clapperboard because we don't have anyone else to do it. And he even stands in for actors in between takes because our production is too poor to afford the actual stand-ins. He's taking care of the time, he's uh, yelling at us if you're going overtime. He's basically the only one who gets to yell at people and he gets away with it. Do you find it um, easy or hard to yell at people? Hard. Hard. Uh, it's part of the job, so sometimes. 
<laughs> you have to help. <laughs> you have to. <laughs> While Dino and I were discussing our next setup, someone appeared. Good to see you, brother. How you doing, man? Kent is the final international member of our cast, and he plays the important role of lavatory supervisor. This is the man um, uh, I've seen on the internet, his picture, his profile picture, and I jumped from a chair because I was so excited, i never seen a face like that. And I, when I sit back down, I missed the whole chair. And I broke my tailbone. And, I, and I'll tell you what, it was worth it. <laughs> yeah. And here we are. Yeah, man, here we are, here we are. These guys making some more gold. What a happy yeah. ending, huh? Yeah. Happy ending. <laughs> The next setup provided uh, an interesting problem. We needed a shot of the side view mirror with George looking out the window. But the car we were using, a Mustang, had no side view mirror. We had a spare mirror, but no way to attach it, you know? So the guys were trying out some tapes. But in the end, they settled for a black tack. I never heard of it before, but uh, they explained it's a very, very sticky black goo and it's extremely strong and action but if you're not going to take it i'm still under his misery we probably did around five to ten takes like we usually do and the mirror was holding strong until you are cool yeah also cool. also cool when you're but look, it was holding for almost an hour. I mean, it's impressive. And we already filmed everything we needed, so, so the guys could just take it off. That was it for all the car scenes, and the car could now go home. We shifted our attention to the final scene of the day, the toilet scene. The first decision was how to light the set. Dina wanted a sharp directional light and some movement in the shot. Once they agreed on the look, the crew started lighting the set while we filmed some additional pickups of George on green screen for some other scene. We would film a take with George, and in the meantime, the crew would already set up Venetian blinds to make the light more interesting. Then we would film another shot, and next time we looked, Dino's cardboard fan was brought to life. Since we have experience with dirty toilets, uh, I noticed one illogical thing. It's dirty here, but this is too clean. So I wasn't satisfied. We need to fix this. Ah, what, what spray is it? For leather shoes. Yeah, for leather shoes. And then water brown. on top. Brown, you have like black and brown. We use usually brown. Ah, but very cool technique. Yeah. You learn something every day. This is a brief, yet significant scene, where George finds himself alone in the toilet, while everyone else is outside watching the Apollo 11 launch. And then uh, you turn, the radio is turned on, you hear the moon landing. You drink a sip of coffee, yeah, and you need to pee. And so, you, my big question is, why doesn't, because he could clearly wait and watch the moon landing, so why doesn't he watch it? I think he's depressed. Right. That's the answer. So, so he's, he's coming in here almost as a protest Yeah. against Jack's thing. Well, I'm going to be pissing while that Jack's thing's happening. Absolutely. Yeah. And action. Here's how the scene unfolds. George enters the toilet and starts taking a leak. Shake. Everything starts shaking because right then rocket engines turn on and blast the Apollo rocket into space. Okay, fly swatter. As the shaking intensifies, the fly swatter falls from the shelf into the urinal, giving George the brilliant idea for the urinal net. Pretty nice. All in one shot. <laughs> 
Very good. Usually it takes one hour to set up and film a shot, and we have 30 minutes left today and two shots to film. So it's it, it, that's the usual thing at the end of the day. We need one one detail, the camera here, and this falls in. This is one shot that we need. Okay, and we need another shot. This is above his head, like here, and, and everything shakes. And, and you just look left and right, and you're not aware that the uh, idea is to fall in your lap, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if we do it, then we filmed everything we needed today, which would be a huge win. Ton! Ton! Six across four, first, only camera. We just filmed the last shot. We actually filmed three shots instead of two that were planned. Yeah, so yeah. We had a very interesting shot above the fly swatter overlooking the main actor. And we also were shaking the walls of the set. And then it just plop fell into the urinal. It was poetry. Yeah, visual poetry. Visual poetry. And it was filmed in three minutes. Yeah. That, that, that's, 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 that's how I like to film, you know. I think we should film like that throughout the day. But that's of course not possible. Yeah, yeah it's not possible, unfortunately. <laughs> so. <laughs> and now it's time for beer. Yeah. Whoa.